don't. There you okay, you're actually on. Now. Okay, good. Somebody phone in. Okay. This is the best place to come in poker to discuss things because there's no censorship and there's no holds barred and there's not a bunch of fucking bullshit. All right. idea uh 443 you're on poker sesh hey Lyman. yeah yeah so uh i was checking i was catching up on some of the uh the old shows and right about I, I think it's about two weeks ago you had a uh east coast pro yeah come on and uh at the end he gave like a little strategy tidbit about like kind of over betting over a couple of limps with like a marginal hand and right. i guess like you didn't go over it like really all that in depth and I just, I guess I'm just not sure like I'm 100% wrapping uh, my head around like what's necessarily the reason for that and I guess like to me to a certain extent it like violates the like you know decide whether you're betting as like a bluff or as you know like a value bet and it's sort right. of one of those in between type instances right well basically what he's saying and what I've seen in my lifetime as well is there's there's a there's a point where a person has never done a certain thing before. Like let's say it's a five five game. There's a point where they've just never called a hundred pre before, okay? Yeah. Or there's a point where they've just never called a two x pot bet on the turn before. Or there's a point where they've never called like a five x shove on the river before. And when you when you realize that you're the guy that I was talking to, his name is Mike Basic. And Mike Basic is sort of the same as me in, in, the, in so much as he only plays at the same casino every single day. He only plays with yeah. a lot of the same lineups. So This wasn't the, this wasn't the Mike Basic one. It was okay, who the is one, this? Um, it's about like two weeks ago. I'm, I'm trying to remember Christian his name. Soto. Oh, Coast, it's bro. Christian Soto. Yeah. Christian Soto. Oh, yeah, it was I Christian mean, I'm going to change what you're saying, but... No, it was it was Christian Soto. I, it does sort of yeah. change what I'm saying in so much as I have to take his advice at face value because I've never played with him and I don't know the games he plays in, but I know that he's a winning player. I know he's a respected player and that he's a coach and he's a coach at, at Red Chip Poker and that he makes videos and that he's very respected. So I'm assuming that he knows what he's talking about. And basically he was saying the same thing, that Riggs... And uh, knit regs, old man coffees, reg fish, they have a breaking point that that you will notice. And just by putting them past their breaking point, you can make a lot of money off them because once they enter like the deep end of the pool, they get very fit or fold. Okay. Sure. Because yeah. they're just smart enough to know that things are going to get massively out of control starting right then. They're just smart enough to know that. And so they make a very fit or fold decision right there at that decision point. And based on their earlier play, you know whether they have a hand that they're going to go with or they're not going to go with. So when you see that they have a hand that they're not going to go with, you just take it from them. Okay. So, and it's, I guess the way I sort of saw it was um, like in a lot of like marginal sway spots, spots where like, like the the standard play is just to like fold or something like that, right? Or like I'm not really sure what how they're going to react in my three bet, but it's like a classic uh, sweet spot, right? I instead of taking like any two cards and doing it, I'll do it with like the top of my folding range, right? So you kind of have like a little bit of equity if he does something weird, or like you you're just sort of I guess like giving yourself like some backdoor outs type of a thing. I guess I sort of thought, saw that as him taking, like, King Jack was the one, the example he gave. Right. Where King Jack offsuit is not necessarily something that... I think he gave uh, that as an example because it has blockers. And then he sees the okay. way his opponent had made the play. Now he has a hand with blockers on it. And he's going to put his opponent in a position. This is sort of like the old Doyle Brunson thing, except you just do it way earlier in the hand. You put a man in a, to a decision for all his chips. Now, you're no, a, a normal fishy guy... When you make a 8x raise, he doesn't think it's a decision for all his chips. He thinks it's for 8x. But your yeah. standard sort of reg knows 
that that's a decision for all their chips. And you could just sort of beat on them a little bit. You could just beat on them. Um, and I mean, I don't do that a lot pre-flop, although maybe I should add it in because that's what people are telling me that they're doing now. Uh, I mostly do it more on like turn plays when the person has capped the range on the flop. Uh, I know that a guy, another guy who's on the show, DGAF, uh, Billy from 2 Plus 2, Billy DGAF from 2 Plus 2, he really does mm -hmm. this a lot. He just puts massive yeah. pressure on people with these big over bets. And it's it's sort of becoming like a thing in poker to a certain extent, but you got to know who you're in with. It's it's basically comes back to people. If you're in with a guy who can recognize that you're telling him that you're going to play a monster pot with him, then he's going to play his hand face up. But if you're in with a guy who can't recognize with that, it's a waste of time. Billy does it a lot in short games because in the short games, yeah. he knows that his opponent knows these regulars they understand that in a short game you play more hands but they've never ever ever got 200 big blinds in with a pair before like middle pair or something so he knows yeah. that they're going to take one off a lot of times and then just wilt under the pressure so he just destroys people in these short games and the people that he's destroying aren't fish they're winners in the full ring game so it's about it's an advanced play it's definitely an advanced yeah. play so, for example, say like a common limping hand um, from like a, a reg would be like a middle pair, say like five or six, fives or sixes or something like that. Right. So I guess from what you're saying, the idea is like if you if you overbet, you really don't mind if you fold fives or sixes because right. fives or six have a lot of equity against you. Right. But the also like the second part of that is if he decides like you know. He only like he's never doing this with aces or kings or something like that. I don't right. think you know. Maybe I'll just take one off with my five or six, and if I hit a five or six, I'll stack him. Right. You're seeing like on the flop. A lot of the times, this guy's going to play fit or fold. Where if he calls off one bet, then you or check raises or something like that. Like you think he's hit a set, right? Or some sort of like goofy X ace X two pair or something like that. And you can just shut it down, but you know, a lot of times you're going to get a fold from someone who just like whipped. Right. And here's the thing: is regs like these sort of like very sort of like bottled in regs. These aren't these are winning poker players because they play by a system. Mm -hmm. And they play tight in the front and they play loose at the back. They don't take one off. Taking one off isn't part of their strategy. In fact, the main one of the main reasons that they can win a little bit in the games is because they don't take one off. So you don't yeah. really worry about them taking one off. This is what I'm now. I play pot limit Omaha 95% of my game. So this is a, a sort of a new concept to me too. Cause I, what I was telling you is I only make in my, in my history, I've never made this play pre flop. This is a new thing that Christian Soto and Billy and Mike Basic. This is a new thing they're telling me about this like 10x type thing pre flop. And what they're saying yeah, is that the person folds so often that it's worth it, that it's a, it's a money maker. And that even if they call, they basically only have like one or two hands, like the hands that they will like make us, they'll, that they will do this with. It's like Ace King or Jack Jack. These are basically like the only hands. And so then you can play against a very, very fucking tight range post-flop. Mm -hmm. This is what they've been yeah, telling so, me. So I guess in PLO, like, the re there's a, like, I play a little bit in Maryland Live, and it's definitely a newer PLO game. But I would tend to think, like, A, you can't overbet. And you B, can't overbet, no. Like, I see constantly people will, like, if they're limping, they're limping to limp call a bet. Yeah. PLO is a completely yeah. different animal. I mean, basically what you're telling the person is you're not going to limp call me. It's not going to happen. I'm going to make you go broke yeah. if you decide to limp call me. And they just wilt under the pressure. That's that's the basic premise is you choose people who can think just far enough ahead that they will wilt under the pressure. Now, do you think you're also trying to like condition them so that they'll start like maybe playing back at you or at least calling down lighter and then you sort of change gears and switch to like doing it with kings or aces or you know, even well, like say like queens or something like that. What they're most likely going to start doing is 
they're going to start trying to limp re-raise you, which is going to get them in yeah. a whole world of hurt because they're going to because you're not making this play very often. This is often, the thing about exactly. live poker. When you do something very strange, like a big overbet or a tiny bet on the river, people give you credit for doing this far more often than you actually do it because the game moves so slow. They don't mm-hmm. weight it correctly. So now these same old man coffee dudes are going to start limping aces to you. And what you're going to get to do most of the time is get them in horrible positions where you don't actually make the raise. And yeah. you outflop their aces because you're not going to go broke in that spot. You understand it's a limp pot. But they're going to go broke 100% of the time with aces if they limped it. That's what all regs, yeah. yeah, like 100% of regs, like sort of like uh, what I'll call unimaginative regs, 100% of unimaginative regs, once they go for a limp re-raise pre and then whiff it, go broke on the flop. 100%. Just stuck. Because yeah. they think, well, he can't put me on this. And it's like, no shit, <laughs> I can't put you on that. I put you on a hand better than that. You care, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And yeah, I mean, you got to think like, A, you're not just going to get like a King Jack like hand that often anyway, when they like the odds, the conditional probability of yeah. them having aces, them most deciding the, time, the limp, and you the... ending up with that marginal hand and your blockers anyway, which prevents right. them, that from happening. Most of the time you're going to have seven, eight suited or pocket threes and see a flop and you're going to break them. And they're not, you're not even going to yeah. know why you broke them, but you'll see at the end why you broke them. But the times that you do have a blocker hand and, and you know, and so that takes a bunch of the hands out of their possible range that would call you, especially if, you know, you have a king or a jack or an ace in your hand or a queen, then you're going to make the play. And uh, this is what I'm told. This is what I'm told. I'm told yeah. this, is, this is becoming like sort of the thing to do to uh, the unimaginative rigs. It's called the lock bomb. Right. <laughs> All right. Thank you, brother. <laughs> yeah, no problem. Thanks, man. No problem. Uh, and on that note, I am going to move on from this controversy. That's it for this episode, guys. Hope you enjoyed it. Please hit the like and subscribe buttons. Some of you are not subscribing, and I'm going to find you. Uh-